In this lecture, we are going to see an introduction to the page speed tools that we are going to use in this section. This is the test website that we are going to optimize in the page speed technique one of this section. This website has got a huge banner image followed by a set of titles, body of the post and a few widgets in the sidebar. So this is a pretty modern website which is based on 2017 theme of WordPress and it's very sleek or we can call it minimal. So it's a lightweight website but this is how Google recommends you to keep your website nowadays. Now let's move on to the first tool that we are going to use in this section. It's called PageSpeed Insights tool and it's from Google itself. In this tool, you will get a set of suggestions or recommendations that you need to implement in your site to get the best page speed possible. For recommendations and suggestions, I advise you or I suggest you to use this PageSpeed Insights tool along with another tool called web page test. Let's come to this tool later. Before that, we need to see a lot more about this page speed insights tool. Since this tool is from Google itself, the algorithm that's used in this tool is up to date and you can rely upon the suggestions or recommendations that's given by this tool. But you don't need to chase this 100 out of 100 page speed score from this tool. If you get a green tick for this mobile and desktop, then that's enough. You don't need to proceed further. At the end of the day, the important thing that matters is the load time, not this page speed score. So let me reiterate again. You need to follow the suggestions or recommendations given by this page speed tool and this web page test tool alone and not any other tools such as GT metrics or Pingdom tools. Now let's come to this second tool called web page test. Sometimes even after optimizing to this maximum 100 out of 100, you might not get the best page loading time. For example, you might be getting around five to six seconds or sometimes even more than that. In that case, this web page test tool will give you some more suggestions or recommendations that you can implement on your website to improve the page loading time. This tool won't give you a score, but it gives you grades for five different things such as first byte time, compress images or transfer or to catch static content, etc. It also gives you a tick mark for effective use of CDN. CDN is also called as Content Delivery Network. We will see more on that in the upcoming lectures. This tool gives you some of the crucial information such as first byte time or repeat view load time and much more. There are multiple load times displayed such as here, here, here and multiple times. The time you need to care about is this, the load time under repeat view. Just ignore all other load times that are displayed in this tool. You just need to care about this load time alone. Okay, let's move on to first byte time of this tool. Why this is so important? Because the first byte time is nothing but the time taken for the first byte to reach from your server to the user's browser. Effectively, nothing is happening in this first byte time. So, if you can reduce it as much as possible, then your total load time will improve accordingly. Though this web page test has given a grade for 0.5 seconds or 0.6 seconds of first byte time, Google recommends you to keep the first byte time or the response time under 200 milliseconds or 0.2 seconds. To improve this first byte time, you need to move to HTTPS and a powerful server or cloud hosting along with CDN. 
So I use CDN and HTTPS. This test website is hosted on a shared hosting for which I pay a little less than $5. So you cannot expect more than 0.5 seconds response time from such servers. So now let's move on to the next tool which is called Pingdom Tools Page Speed Testing Tool. So this tool gives you a lot of information such as performance grade, some performance insights and lot more. I suggest you not to see any of them. You just need to care about this load time and you can take this page size for reference. That is, if you reduce the page size, your load time will improve. But don't take these performance insights into account and don't try to optimize your website based on these suggestions. For recommendations and suggestions, use page speed insights and web page test. To check the load time, use Pingdom tools. You might have noticed that I have got 0.5 seconds load time under Pingdom tools, whereas I have got 1.8 seconds load time under web page test tool. This doesn't mean one of the tool is wrong. This load time can vary based on several factors such as the browser used, the location of the user, here the location or country where the tool is hosted. Moreover, the speed of the internet connection matters a lot. So based on these factors, the load time can vary. But let me give you some benchmark timing which you can set as a target. For web page test tool, 3 seconds load time under repeat view is the maximum. But if you can get something under 2 seconds like me here, that's brilliant. You can get such scores only when you use a page speed optimized minimalistic theme along with the reasonably fast server and the best tuning possible which you will learn from this section. But if you can get something under 3 seconds, that's good, no issue at all. Coming to Pingdom tools, if you can get a load time under 1.5 seconds, that's brilliant. But you can stretch the load time to a maximum of 2 seconds in this Pingdom tools. So these are the benchmark load times or the target load times for your website. Regarding GT metrics, I advise you again not to use this tool even to check the load times or for the recommendations because they are not consistent over time. You will get various load times whenever you retest the website. So it's almost impossible to rely upon this unreliable tool. Earlier GT metrics happened to be the go-to tool for recommendations and loading time. But now they are not up to the mark and that's why I advise you not to use GT metrics for both recommendations and load time testing. From the next lecture, we will be starting to optimize your website for the best page speed. But before that, we need to take some precautionary steps to be fail safe. In this lecture, you are going to learn how to be fail safe before doing the optimization of page speed in your website. So, what is file safe? There is a minimum probability that while optimizing your website or while installing the bunch of plugins that I'm going to demonstrate in this section, you may break your website. In such case, you must be able to restore your website to the previous working state. That's why I advise you to take the database backup. To create the database backup of your WordPress website, come to Add Plugins page and search for Database Backup. Among the list of plugins that are displayed to you, choose WP Database Backup and click Install. To speed up the process, I have already installed and activated this plugin. To create 
a WordPress database backup. After installing and activating this plugin, go to Tools and click WP DB Backup. This will open a page like this. Once you have opened this page, click Create New Database Backup, which will create database backup of your WordPress website and store it in your server. Once the process is completed, you can download the backup file from here to keep a backup in your computer rather than in your server. To restore the backup, you can either click this Restore Database Backup button or if you even can't enter into WordPress dashboard, then you can use this backup in PHP MyAdmin page and restore into the appropriate database table of your WordPress website. In the next lecture, let's see an introduction to the two page speed techniques. In this lecture, we are going to see some of the hosting providers that I don't recommend to get the maximum speed possible for your website. The first on the list is SiteGround.com. Why? Because I have seen many students from this SEO course hosting their website on SiteGround and they don't get even half of the speed what other students can get for the same configuration in a different hosting provider. So why this happens with SiteGround or some other hosting providers like iPage2? This is because they offer specialized hosting for WordPress. And any beginner in WordPress naturally gets attracted to these kind of hosting plans because they think, wow, there is a separate hosting for WordPress. So this should be the one for me. That's how they think because there is no such thing like it's suitable for 10,000 visits or 25,000 visits. No one can say like that. These are just gimmicks. You need to understand these visits are normally restricted by the bandwidth you use. And most of the hosting providers provide unlimited bandwidth. So there is no such thing that regulates the visits. The thing that you need to care about or whether they use SSD storage spaces, how much input output bandwidth and the bandwidth speed they are providing. And also how many processes they are allowing you to use or run simultaneously. Beyond that, you need to care about whether they allow you to customize each and everything in your hosting for yourself. But you cannot expect all these options in any hosting which provide specialized WordPress hosting. So in any hosting provider, if you see this is a WordPress hosting plan or specialized for WordPress or optimized for WordPress, then just avoid that hosting because there is no such thing as that. Now coming to what is the hosting that I recommend? Well, I recommend for shared hosting. If you want to choose a hosting package that is less than $10 a month, then choose stable host. Whereas, if you want to go to VPS server, then don't go for VPS. Instead, go for cloud VPS from VPS.net. They also offer SSD VPS, but I just don't recommend them. Just use cloud VPS. You can get it for around $50. Don't go by this $15 a month. I am saying five zero because you need to add power pack and at least two nodes to use the cPanel. Let me show you. See, you need to use cPanel for the best and easy management. For that, you need at least two GB RAM because if you go for one node with one GB RAM, then that's just like a shared hosting. So if you are going to a cloud VPS, Choose two nodes and along with cPanel with sent OS. That will take you to five zero fifty dollars per month. So if you are in this budget, go to this website's cloud VPS server. Now, if you are even more, then go to Liquid Web's cloud dedicated, not this simple dedicated hosting. Go to cloud dedicated hosting and choose a single processor at $159 per month or any other higher options. Also, I recommend you not to go for managed WordPress hosting. There's no such thing like that because they are already pre-optimized in such a way you cannot optimize or customize for your needs. 
that's why i recommend you to take a bare bone or the hosting that is designed for everything you can customize it like anything you want now coming to why i recommend this type of hosting which can be customized let's see this is my stable host c panel here you can see they offer 2 gb ram for this web hosting plan i am under this 9 dollar pro web hosting plan for this website and you can see they offer 2 gb ram 100 processes that can run simultaneously and as usual unlimited bandwidth unlimited disk usage unlimited sql database email all these are unlimited but basically they are limited in some other terms which you will not peak so just assume they are unlimited what i am considered is this one it's 5 capital mbps that's the input output bandwidth speed i consider only these two things when i look for a hosting ram and this input output usage most of the hosting providers don't mention this anywhere that's why i'm showing you my c panel next what other features i like here they provide varnish catch for free for any number of websites you use also they provide easy cloudflare integration and they themselves use cloudflare for their stable host website coming to compressed content they provide zlib compression for all types of content you can even disable them or enable them for the contents that you want next they offer let's encrypt free ssl i use ssl for all my websites you can manually issue it you can renew it you can do anything you want and they are free and they renew automatically and they don't even mention them when you buy a hosting that's why many new beginners go to a hosting which provide an ssl for free along with their web hosting you can buy an ssl from dollar 10 a year to dollar 300 a year or even this free ssl based on the type of website you use so let's come back to this final and most important option you can choose the php version tell me which hosting provides this option for you and also you can choose any feature that you want to install in a shared hosting for example i can install memcache or opcache or any feature that i want now switching to php options i can change the memory limit manually the maximum post size the maximum upload limit everything i can change manually using php selector or php options under this shared hosting so this is why i recommend you stable host for shared hosting and this offers the maximum customization through which you can attain the maximum speed similarly this vps.net cloud hosting is by far the fastest hosting that i have ever seen in a cloud vps and i tried it myself regarding this liquid web cloud dedicated servers i haven't tried it with myself but i have read lots of reviews and i know they are great for a cloud dedicated server in this lecture you will learn what is a cdn and why it's needed no matter what you do or what type of content you consume chances are that you will find cdns behind every character of text every image pixel and every movie frame that gets delivered to your pc and mobile browser cdn is the answer to one of the mostly faced issue called latency latency is nothing but the delay that occurs from the moment you request to load a web page to the moment it actually starts to load on your screen when you use a cdn your static content is cached and stored on multiple cdn servers across the world static content includes images css files javascripts etc now when a user visits your site which is hosted on your main server the cdn technology redirects them to the closest cdn server near their location 
since the delay duration is impacted mostly by the physical distance between the user and that website's hosting server, CDNs reduce the distance by redirecting them to the closest CDN server. In addition to reducing the delay time, a modern CDN can take care of several other things such as it can improve page load speed, handle sudden high traffic loads, block spammers and other bad bots, reduce your server's bandwidth consumption, protect your website from DDoS attacks and much more. There are many premium CDN services out there. The best ones among them are KeyCDN, MacCDN, GoogleCDN, Amazon AWS, Rackspace, etc. But there are a few free CDNs are also available with limited features. We are going to use two free CDNs. Whether you are going to follow PageSpeed Technique 1 or PageSpeed Technique 2, you need to implement CDN in your website. We are going to implement a free image CDN and a free CDN for the rest of the static files. Before that, we need to compress the images that are hosted in our server. Let's see how to compress images using free plugins. In this lecture, we are going to see two image compression plugins to compress the images that you have on your server. Both the plugins that we are going to see are free image compression plugins. First, go to plugins and then select add new. On the search bar, search for compress images. Smush image compression and optimization plugin, short pixel plugin, and image file plugin are all equally good free plugins, but they also have premium plugins. That's why these free plugins come with a set of limitations. For example, this Smush plugin comes with a maximum size of 1 MB per image limitation. Sort Pixel gives you 100 MB per month, whereas Imageify gives you 25 MB per month. Whereas this compress JPG and PNG images from tiny PNG gives you 500 image compressions per month. But technically, for page speed, this tiny PNG plugin offers the best image compression possible. The next best option is E. W image optimizer though it doesn't offer the maximum image compression like the tiny png plugin this offers the maximum customizability in case you need to keep the exif data or exif data so let's see how to install and configure both these plugins that is tiny png and E -W -W image optimizer. Let's install both these plugins but activate compressed JPG and PNG images plugin first. In the plugins page, scroll down, come to settings under compressed JPG and PNG images plugin. Since I have already installed and registered an account, this box appears. A bit different for me. You will get two options when you install for the first time that is your name and email to register an account or login. When you enter your name and email and click register then you will get this box displayed. After that you need to activate your account and enter the API key. Now let me refresh the page after activation. So you don't need to go to their website and enter the API key manually. It's all automatic and so easy to configure. Now coming to the actual configuration of the plugin itself, you will get three image sizes. One is thumbnail, then medium, 
and then large size. You can even change the preset size of these images or leave it to WordPress defaults. Let your files be organized into month and year based folders. Now, here comes the file compression section. Most of the other free plugins like WP Smash or Sort Pixel or Imageify lacks this most essential feature in their free version that is to resize and compress the original image whereas this tiny PNG plugin offers you to compress the original image. If you want to resize and then compress the original image then you can check this checkbox where you can give maximum width or height for the resized original image. As you select more options, the number of images that can be compressed will get reduced because each of these options generate one more image which leads to multiple image compression for each image you upload and that's why the number of images that can be compressed for each month gets reduced. By default, only these options are necessary but based on the theme you use, you may need to choose some other options like this. Once you have selected all these options, click save changes. Then go to media and then bulk optimization. Alternatively, you can go to plugins and choose bulk optimization under compress JPG and PNG images from tiny PNG. You will get details of the total uploaded images and the uncompressed images. To compress all your images, click on Start Bulk Optimization. This plugin compresses images by uploading them to its own server. After that, it compresses and then downloads those images to your server back. So if you care about your privacy or if you are so conscious about the images, moving from your server to some third party server then you may need to use the next plugin that is AWW Image Optimizer. Now the image compression process has got completed and you can easily notice that the compression has saved around 25%. But the interesting point here is Already all these images are compressed using WP Schmus plugin. So even after that, this tiny PNG plugin could give 25% savings. That's why I recommend this plugin for ease of use and the best page speed. So for most of the users, this plugin will fit their need. But there will be some who would need further customizability rather than optimization. For them, go to plugins. Let me deactivate this plugin because you don't need both the plugins at a time. You just need to use either Compress JPG and PNG Images plugin or EWW Image Optimizer plugin, not both. So now let me activate this plugin. Let's go to settings. Before using this plugin, you need to see the plugin status which should display all clear status. If this signal is not displaying for you then you cannot use this plugin because your server is missing some essential features for image compression. Coming to the basic settings, you don't need to use cloud optimization. You can just use your own server optimization. Now let's come down to JPG optimization level where you can only choose lossless compression. Whereas under tiny PNG plugin, it compressed all the images with lossy compression. That's why it was able to get the additional 25% savings compared to lossless compression. Whereas in PNG optimization level, you can go for lossy compression even with a free edition of this AWW Image Optimizer. Now, click Save Changes 
and then let's move on to advanced settings the customizability of this plugin starts from this advanced settings tab for example you can schedule the optimization you can opt to include media library folders or you can opt to ignore some folders check this allow resizing of existing media library images to resize all the existing images similar to tiny png plugin here also for each image you upload a thumbnail medium a medium large a large images are created by default and additional two images are created because of the theme i'm using that is 2017 theme from wordpress as i said before you may exclude full size images from metadata removal or other options like to skip small images or to skip large png images etc under conversion settings you may opt to delete the original images after successful conversion this will help you to free up your server space though this plugin offers you to convert jpg to png or png to jpg these conversions will take a lot of cpu resources so use them carefully coming to web page settings when you check this checkbox the jpg or png files will be converted to another format called webp but the original files are not deleted because when the user's browser doesn't support this webp format then jpg or png files are served as said before this plugin is for advanced users who want more customizability so for most users i just recommend them to use compress jpg and png images plugin to compress all your images on your website in the next lecture let's see how to add a free image cdn service in this lecture we are going to add a free image cdn to our website as usual go to plugins and then select add new search for jetpack or you can find it by default in this location click on install now and then click activate once you activate this plugin you need to connect this to wordpress.com to connect it to wordpress you need an account in wordpress.com website login into wordpress.com click approve then select start with free you will be taken to the dashboard page now come to settings disable all the other features except speed up images and photos you can notice that i have disabled all the other features or in other words i haven't enabled any other feature this is very important because jetpack is a powerful plugin which loads several javascript and css files as you enable more and more features so enable the features only those you want in our case for page speed you don't need any other feature except this speed up images and photos when you click this feature all the images from your website will be served through jetpack's own cdn the two for free let's check it directly in our website open your website then open any image in a new tab you can see that the image is not served from my own domain it's served from i0.wp.com which says it is served from a different server or jetpack's own server this is how we can speed up the loading of images that are hosted on our own website so you have added a free image cdn in your website in the next lecture let's see how you can add a free total cdn for your entire website other than images in this lecture you are going to see what is cloudflare and 
how we can implement Cloudflare for our website. Normally, Cloudflare doesn't need to be installed as a plugin inside your WordPress. You just need to point your name servers to the name servers given by Cloudflare and Cloudflare will do the rest automatically. Cloudflare is not just a CDN. A CDN just takes your website and provides your website from a nearer server to your visitor. Yes, Cloudflare does that too, but it's not just that. It also optimizes your content. That is, it catches your website, it minifies your JavaScript, HTML and CSS. It offers automatic optimization called Rocket Loader which speeds up the loading of your website. Since it's free, there is no loss for you in configuring Cloudflare for your website. Not only that, Cloudflare also acts as a security barrier between your website and hackers. You can also set the security level from essentially off to low, medium, high and even you can mention that you are under a DDoS attack. Cloudflare also gives you many analytics reports, monitors, traffic control, real-time traffic, geographical IP and much more. So let's see how we can add our website to Cloudflare. Before clicking this add site button, you need to sign up for Cloudflare. Once you have signed up and logged in, just enter your domain name here and click begin scan. Since I have already added my domain inspireround.com, I cannot add it again. But let me show you a demo of one of the famous website called onantech.com. I am not the owner of onantech.com and I cannot add it. But I can show you the process of how to add it. Once Cloudflare finishes the scanning of this website, it will give me the configuration of onantech.com domain. If I am the owner of this domain, then my job is very simple. I just need to point my name servers to the name servers given by Cloudflare in my domain registrar's dashboard. The configuration is so simple, right? Once the scanning is over, click continue setup. So these are the DNS items that are configured for onantech.com. Though it's added here, this will not work until the name servers of onantech.com are pointed to Cloudflare. Also, you can choose what are all the subdomains you want to pass it through Cloudflare. For example, if you want to pass mail through Cloudflare, click it and this icon will turn into orange, which shows that the mail server will pass through Cloudflare and will be served by Cloudflare. When I click Advanced, you have the option to upload your DNS files and you can also export this list for your further use. Now click Continue. You will be presented with a free plan, pro plan and a business website plan. Just click Free and click Continue. If I am the owner of onantech.com, then I will remove all these four name servers and insert these two name servers. Once I have done this, within 10 to 12 hours, all of the content of my website will be served by Cloudflare. Don't worry, in the meantime, your website will be accessible, but it will be served from your server directly. Once the DNS has got changed to Cloudflare name servers, then it will be served by Cloudflare. Now I am clicking continue. Since anantech.com is not my domain, I am going to delete all these records or the entire domain name from my account. Once you have logged in and added your website into Cloudflare, go to your domain and configure it as I saw here for the best page speed. Go to Crypto tab, choose option full. Only if you have completely tested the HTTPS version of your website for posts, pages, images 
attachment, your WordPress dashboard, etc. Else, if you don't have SSL, choose off. Or if you haven't tested SSL but you have just installed the SSL certificate, then choose flexible. Don't choose always use HTTPS. Also, don't enable HSTS. But you may opt for opportunistic encryption to get benefit from the improved performance of HTTP2 or HTTPS protocol. Also, you can enable automatic HTTPS rewrites to resolve the partial HTTPS issues. Coming to firewall, you can set your security level at your preference. But let's keep it at medium as default. After that, come to speed and disable the auto minify of JavaScript, CSS and HTML. Scroll down and you can opt for AMP or accelerated mobile pages or mobile links for your websites and then turn off the rocket loader. Now come to catching, choose no query string for catching level, choose one month for browser catch expiration or you may choose one day if your site is more dynamic. You may opt for always online in case if your server goes down then Cloudflare will serve your recent catched version of the website. These are the basic settings that are needed to get the best page speed possible from Cloudflare. You might wonder why I have disabled auto minify of JS CSS and also why I have disabled rocket loader because these settings often come in conflict with our page speed technique 1 whereas if you are using page speed technique 2 then also you need to disable these three options but you can enable rocket loader alone as automatic. In the next lecture, I will demystify some of the common page speed myths. In this lecture, I will demystify some of the common page speed myths. There's a widespread myth which says that when you use more plugins, it affects your page speed. I have come across this question several times in our course question answer board. Though I cannot agree to this myth, we cannot neglect it altogether. Let me clarify you briefly. Plugins are of two types, front-end plugins and back-end plugins. There's no such official classification. I name them like that for easy understanding. Plugins like WP Forms, Optin Monster, Discuss, TablePress, Metaslider, Jetpack, etc. which gets loaded when a visitor visits your website are called front-end plugins. The myth applies here only. If you use more plugins of this type, then your website's page speed will get affected. Plugins like iTheme Security, Catch Plugins, Yoast SEO, Akismet, etc. which gets loaded only when you visit the WordPress dashboard or in other words, they get loaded only for logged in WordPress editors or admins. The myth does not apply here. You can use as many backend plugins as you like. It won't affect your website's page speed. On the other hand, instead of affecting your website's page speed, some backend plugins like catch plugins improve your website's page speed. With that said, Let's move on to the next big thing that is themes. Generally, themes are not talked much when talking about page speed. But in real time, themes have got a lot of role to play. Most of the premium themes from Theme Forest comes with Revolution Slider plugin and Visual Builder plugin, some contact forms, etc. Apart from a few Theme Forest themes, like Avada, most other themes are not optimized for page speed. Irrespective of what hosting you use or what tuning you do, 
you can never attain a page speed score of 95 plus or a page load time less than 2 seconds with such unoptimized themes. While buying themes from any website, look in the description. If a theme is optimized for page speed, then it will be mentioned clearly and explicitly. For example, Avada theme. If it's not mentioned, then don't assume it as page speed optimized. If you're already using some premium theme from Theme Forest or any other brand, and if you can't get a good score from Page Speed Insights, then switch to 2017 theme from WordPress temporarily and check the Page Speed Insights score or page loading time from Pingdom Tools. The result will make you understand how much unoptimized your premium theme is. The next myth is leverage catching of external assets. Here, assets include JavaScripts, CSS, and images. You can control or optimize the assets that are loaded from your domain or your website only. If you use plugins or HTML codes, which import or load assets from external domains, then you can't optimize those assets. Naturally, your page speed score will get a hit. For example, Google AdSense or Analytics codes, Facebook widgets, etc. Yes, I too agree that we cannot run a website without using these basic external assets. But these external assets are equivalent to front-end plugins. With the usage of more and more external assets, your page speed score will reduce and your page loading time will increase. So, you need to restrict the usage of these external assets as far as possible. There's one more myth revolving around, that is, 100 out of 100 page speed score. Page speed score is just a guideline to improve your website's page speed. If your website loads under 3 seconds in webpagetest.org, then you don't need to worry much about the page speed inside score. Whereas, if you still want to improve the performance of your website, and if you don't know where to start, then Page Speed Insights Score acts as a guide there. So let me reiterate the important things now. You can use many backend plugins, but reduce the usage of frontend plugins. Always use Page Speed Optimized Premium Themes. Example, Avada from Theme Forest and Divi Theme from elegant themes. Avoid using page speed unoptimized plugins like Visible Builder plugins or Revolution Slider plugin, etc. If you want page speed optimized drag and drop website builder, then use Divi Builder plugin from elegant themes along with some page speed optimized theme. Restrict the usage of external assets as you cannot optimize them for page speed. You don't need to chase 100 out of 100 page speed inside score. At the end of the day, page loading time matters. In this lecture, we are going to see global page speed technique. Why global page speed technique? There are three main reasons. The first one is that it involves only one plugin that to a free plugin. So you don't need to configure or install multiple plugins and also you don't need to buy any premium ones. The second reason is it's very quick and easy to configure. Though it involves only one plugin, it doesn't involve any complex configuration setups. Now the third reason is it is widely compatible. That is, it works flawlessly with major themes or plugin setups. The downside is that 
this plugin is still in beta and it's based on an invite system although they accept almost all the invite requests before installing the plugin we can test whether it will work on our site or not to test that we need to use an online tool go to pagespeed.ninja type your url and press enter this tool will run several tests mentioned in google page speed insights and will provide you the comparative results the test usually takes a bit of time and it may ask your email address to ping you once the test is done in my opinion you may wait another minute instead once the test is over the results will tell you your websites before and after google page speed insights score if you are satisfied with them then you may proceed with the configuration of this plugin in this lecture we are going to install and configure page speed ninja plugin go to plugins and then click on add new then search for page speed ninja install this page speed ninja plugin and then activate it to initialize page speed ninja you need to open its settings page so you can either click on here or under page speed ninja plugin let me click here and go to settings page you will get a pop up window which is a easy configuration visor so let me uncheck send anonymous statistics keep this remote critical css generation enabled and choose the optimization profile preset as safe after selecting this preset we need to check our website if everything works correctly then we can move on step by step from safe to ultra this safe preset gives optimizations that are compatible with most of the themes and plugins but this may not give the highest google page speed insights scores whereas ultra may not be compatible with most of the themes and plugins but it will give you the highest google page speed insights scores that's why we are going to move from safe to ultra in a step by step manner first let's choose safe and click save let's wait for the page speed ninja plugin to apply the configuration it will also show you the existing page speed and the post page speed score after applying page speed ninja configuration if you are satisfied with the results click save and let's view our website well the css effects the js scripts and the images everything seem to load correctly let me open this post here also everything works flawlessly now to move from the safe preset to the next one go to advanced tab and then click on compact then click save after saving if you come back to general tab you can now see the improved page speed score for desktop and mobile if the score doesn't improve for example it increased for mobile but it decreased a bit for desktop so you can play around with these presets such as safe compact optimal ultra and experimental but in case of experimental you should be double cautious because this may certainly break some elements in your website such as sliders or some widgets or some menu transitions etc so what i suggest is to try optimal or ultra don't go beyond that this is the balanced option between the compatibility and speed now click save and check your website for the last time if everything works correctly such as the font styles css effects etc then run a page speed test with webpagetest.org and tools.pingdom.com in case of my inspireround.com website this page speed ninja improved the mobile score from 65 to 91 and for desktop 
it improved the score from 79 to 97. There are two page speed techniques in this section and you will learn what technique to follow in this lecture. I have been into designing and building websites since 2010. In this years of journey, my preferences and choices in web design have got matured and now I like flat design with simple elements. But every newcomers to web building or web design likes to have a magnificent website with loads of bells and whistles which even Google doesn't encourage. Also, Google weighs site speed as a user experience factor. Optimizing even a light website itself is a tedious task such as to make it to load under one second or to get a page speed score greater than 95%. But even then, some users or in our case, some students still want to use Visual Builder plugins, Teamforest themes. These websites are so heavy. That's why emerged the need for two page speed techniques. Now let's see whether you need to follow technique 1 or technique 2 for your website. Follow technique 1 if you are using a free theme from WordPress repository or paid theme from famous fast theme builders like StudioPress, DIY themes etc. This list doesn't include theme forest themes except in a few cases where it's explicitly mentioned that the theme is optimized for page speed. If you are not using any visual builder or drag and drop building plugins, if you are ready to spend a few hours to optimize your website and get a page loading time less than a second and a page speed score above 95% in Google's page speed insights tool. but here is the disclaimer. You will need to install 5 to 6 free plugins. Sometimes you may mess up with CSS, JS optimization if you don't follow the steps exactly. Now let's see who can follow technique 2. If you are using a paid or free theme from Theme Forest or any other website that is not optimized for speed. If you are using any visual builder or drag and drop building plugins. If you are not ready to spend even a few hours to optimize your website, then this technique just takes less than 20 to 30 minutes based on your capabilities to follow. It's so easy and quick, you will get a page loading time around a second or two and a page speed score around 85% in Google's page speed insights tool. This technique gives better or improved page loading time even for heavy websites compared to technique 1. But the downside is page speed score will be a little less than technique 1. Here comes the disclaimer. You will need to install just one premium plugin. And as said before, this technique is super easy and quick. If you ask me why this technique involves a premium plugin, then my answer is a website becomes heavy or large in size because of the usage of poorly coded themes or plugins which are often premium. So the logic here is if a user or student prefers a premium theme, then he or she doesn't mind opting to a premium plugin to optimize the theme. Isn't it? Which technique do I recommend in an ideal scenario? If you ask me what's ideal, then I recommend you to go with any StudioPress premium themes or free and minimal WordPress themes from WordPress repository and PageSpeed Technique 1 for the best possible page speed score, page loading time and SEO benefits. If you are so concerned about easy web building plus bells and whistles, then I recommend Divi theme 
from Elegant Themes plus PageSpeed Technique 2 for drag and drop website building plus best page loading time. But your page speed score will be around 85%. At the end of the day, real time loading time only matters for user experience SEO. So don't worry about getting 95 or 100% page speed score. If you are using a premium theme from Theme Forest and you don't want to buy the premium plugin, then you can follow PageSpeed Technique 1. There's no harm in that. But if the theme you are using is poorly optimized for page speed, then you might find some trouble in JS and CSS minification. In that case, raise a question in our question answers board along with your website URL. I will tell you some suggestions. If that suggestions too can't improve your score, then you are left with two options. One, change to a page speed optimized theme. Two, follow page speed technique two, which means you need to buy that premium plugin if you want a better score for your poorly coded theme. In this lecture, we are going to add further image optimization using a new plugin. Here is our test website. You could have noticed there are several images in multiple posts throughout our home page. But apart from these images that are in the above the fold section, other images are not necessary to be loaded when the user enters the website for the first time. These images that are below the fold are needed to be loaded only when the user scrolls down. This can be done using a script called lazy load. There are multiple plugins available to do this job without adding any code or script inside our website. For that, go to plugins and then click on add new button. In the search plugins box, search for lazy load. There are several lazy load plugins available and I would like to use this A3 lazy load plugin. So let me click install now. Once the installation is over, we can click on this activate button. Now let's configure this A3 lazy load plugin to optimize our image loading further. Let's leave this plugin framework global settings. It's not directly related to the working of this plugin. So coming to lazy load activation, you need to enable this. Lazy load images, you need to switch on lazy load for images, images in content, images in widgets, post thumbnails, gravatos, and you also need to activate or switch on this no script support. In case if the users have disabled their JavaScript, then this no script tag will work as a fallback. Next coming to lazy load for videos and iframes. You need to enable this video and iframes in content, in widgets and again no script support. Coming to script load optimization. Generally if a JavaScript is loaded in the footer, then it's best for page speed because they don't act as a render blocking JavaScripts. So it's best to load them in the photo section. Coming to WordPress mobile template plugins. If you use WP Touch or mobile press plugins, they display a different version of your website for mobile users. In that case, you can opt to disable A3 lazy load for WP Touch or mobile press themes. Coming to effect and style. If you choose spinner, if you choose spinner, then the image will load with a spin effect. Whereas if you choose fade in, then the image will fade in gradually. Also, you can load using different background color. For example, if your website has got a white background, then choose white color. Whereas if your website is based on a dark shade or black color, then you can choose black here. Here comes the last section that is image load threshold. 
it's best to keep it as 0 pixels but if you increase this threshold then elements start to load as soon as the user reaches this threshold instead of when they actually reach the actual viewport or the actual section of the page. So we have completely configured this A3 lazy load plugin. Now after configuring click save changes. Now let's view our website again. Now let me scroll down and have an eye on the images. You can see that they are appearing with a fade in effect but it's not that visible to the eyes of a normal user. So a normal visitor or a user won't notice this lazy loading of images but it will help in decreasing the page loading time and also improving the page speed score. So as of now we have compressed the images, added a separate CDN for images and we made further image optimization using a lazy load plugin. So with this we have completely optimized and compressed the images on our website. So let's see the page speed score and page loading time at this stage. When it comes to page speed, as I said before, the important things are choosing a best page speed optimized theme, a customizable server and a good CDN. After that, the best page speed tuning possible. In our case, we haven't even entered into the core tuning that is adding catch or minification or eliminate render blocking. But still, I have already got a good score by just optimizing the images and adding a CDN. Whereas in case of mobile, I need to do further optimizations like minification of CSS and JavaScript, eliminate the render blocking of CSS and JavaScript and also I need to reduce the server response time. But in case of page loading time, I have already got 1.06 seconds load time. This is possible because of a page size of just 322 KB. The reason behind this lower page size is a page speed optimized theme that is the 2017 theme by WordPress itself. As I said in the first lecture of this section, even though I have got a good score in PageSpeed Insights tool, my first byte time or the load time is not as good as we saw in the first lecture. But by just adding Cloudflare, compressing images, adding lazy load plugin, we have almost got a grade for all the suggestions and recommendations. In the upcoming lectures, let's add further optimization to our website. But in the next lecture, let's see how to reduce the response time or the first byte time using a plugin. In this lecture, we are going to see how to reduce the server response time or the first byte time. For this, we are going to use a plugin called Speed Booster plugin. To install this plugin, go to plugins page and click on add new. Now search for speed booster. Install this speed booster pack plugin and click activate. Now we need to go to the settings page of this speed booster pack plugin. For that, come to the left sidebar and click speed booster. This plugin is a lightweight plugin and it offers several speed boosting capabilities or features but we are not going to use all of them. We are going to use the options which lets us to improve our server response time or the first byte time. For that enable remove query strings under general section and under more settings section enable every option. Under need even more speed section, disable everything or don't enable anything. Now scroll down and click save changes. That's it. We are not going to touch or enable any options under advanced or CDN 
or Google Analytics or even optimize more tabs. In the next lecture, let's see how to install a caching plugin to catch the static files on our website. In this lecture, we are going to install and configure a catch plugin to our website. Go to plugins and then select add new. Search for total catch. Install and activate W3 total catch plugin. Now we need to configure it. To configure, we need to go to the settings of this total catch plugin. You can either go to plugins and click on settings under W3 total catch or go to performance menu on the sidebar and click on general settings. Now coming to page catch, you need to choose disk enhanced method. If disk enhanced is not available for you, you can go with disk basic. Whereas if your server supports opcode e accelerator or alternate PHP catch, you can choose any of them. Whereas if your server has got memcached or redis, well and good, that's much faster than disk enhanced. Enable page catch and let's move on to minify section. Don't use minify options in W3 total catch. It doesn't work well for almost half of the hosting configurations and themes. So let's disable this minify and move on to opcode catch. Nowadays, most shared hosting itself offers opcode catch. Whereas if you don't have, then leave it. Else, choose the one that you have. Coming to database catch and object catch, disable both of them. Now come down to browser catch, enable it. And coming to CDN, if you had purchased a CDN from any of these, then choose it and click enable. Else, leave it disabled and scroll down. Coming to miscellaneous, you can enable Google PageSpeed dashboard widget and you need to enter the PageSpeed API key. To acquire an API key, visit this API console where you will get the instruction to get the API key. This is not necessary, but just optional to get the page speed rating of each page in the admin bar itself. Generally, that won't be accurate. So I suggest you not to push yourself in this option if you are not interested. But to display the rating, you need to enable the checkbox. Now, enable so page rating in admin bar. If you have entered the page speed API key, then enable this verify rewrite rules and disable anonymously track usage to improve product quality. Come down and click save all settings. Now come to page catch settings on the left sidebar. Click catch post page, catch SSL request only if you have HTTPS and SSL certificate installed. Not only that, you need to check whether HTTPS works on every page or post, attachments, images, mainly your WordPress dashboard. Once you have checked that, click this catch SSL request. Check don't catch pages for logged in users. Here comes the most essential thing. Scroll down and come to advanced section enable the compatibility mode this is very important after that leave everything to default and then click save all settings or save settings and purge catches now let's move on to browser catch here you need to enable all of these that is, set lost modified header, 
set expires header, set catch control header, set entity tag, set w3 total catch header, enable gzip compression, prevent catching of objects after settings change, and also remove query strings from static resources. Don't set cookies for static files. All these settings are need to be enabled. Don't enable do not process 404 errors. Rewrite URL structure. Once you have enabled these options under general section, then automatically these settings are followed in CSS and JS, HTML and XML, and media and other file sections too. Now click save all settings. If you get this button, that is update media query string, then click it too. Once you have done that, empty the page cache. Like I said earlier, minification in W3 total cache is not that safe. It might break your site. So we need to use a separate plugin to minify HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. Let's install a new plugin to optimize these static resources. In this lecture, we are going to optimize HTML, CSS, and JavaScript using a new plugin apart from W3 Total Catch. So let's come to Plugins and click Add New. Search for Auto Optimize. You need to be aware of the spelling. There is no space between auto and optimize and also there is only one appearance of the letter O, auto optimize or we can call it as auto optimize. Okay, you need to install this plugin by Frank. Let's install now and click activate once installed. To configure this auto optimize plugin, you can either click on this settings under plugins page or go to settings and then click auto optimize. First enable HTML options, JavaScript options and CSS options. Then click save changes. Now to configure the advanced options, you need to click on this show advanced settings button. Now enable add try catch wrapping and click save changes and empty catch. From now on, while clearing the catches, you can go to performance, then click purge all catches to clear W3 total catch plugins catch. Not only that, you also need to come to auto optimize and click delete catch. Only after clearing both these catches, your website is free from all the catched files. Now let's refresh our website and check whether this minification works correctly. Let's scroll down. The images are loading correctly. So the JavaScript is working. Also the styling option hasn't got any error or in other words, the styling is working correctly. But you could notice that the performance has got a further hit from 94 to 92. But let's check the page loading time. So this is the loading time that we have got after configuring speed booster pack. Now let's run the test again. So with this configuration, we could save further 200 milliseconds in page load time compared to the speed booster pack configuration. But still the page speed score has got reduced from 99 to 92 for desktop and 85 for mobile. But still, we have got a green tick for both of them and the real time page load time has got reduced, which matters at the end of the day. So even in this page speed technique one, you have got two different types of configurations as of now. That is, either to configure speed booster pack completely that is enable all the options under general options except this lazy load because we have got a3 lazy load plugin for that and also you need to enable load css asynchronously 
along with these two options. You can use this configuration. This is PageSpeed Technique 1A. We can call it like that. Or you can check only these six options and then install W3 Total Catch to enable browser catch and page catch. But we are going to use auto optimize for minification. We can call this configuration as page speed technique 1B because this technique 1B gives better or improved page load time but a bit less page speed inside score compared to the page speed technique 1A. But still, we are not going to stop here. We have got a few issues like to eliminate render blocking of JavaScript and CSS. Once we correct this issue, then our page speed inside score will improve further. Not only that, our page load time will reduce further. So let's see how to eliminate render blocking of CSS and JavaScript. In this lecture, you are going to learn how to eliminate render blocking CSS and JavaScript files. To resolve this issue, we need to install and configure a new plugin called Above the Fold Optimization. So come to Plugins and click on Add New. Now search for Above the Fold Optimization. Install the plugin by PageSpeed.pro. Once installed, click Activate. This plugin configuration involves a complex process. So you need to sit tight and follow it exactly. Before the configuration of this plugin, we need to download the entire CSS of our website. But this CSS needs to be free from any minification or catching files. So to do that, first purge all catches of W3 total catch, delete catch of auto optimize, and then deactivate auto optimize, speed booster pack, and W3 total catch plugin. Now we have got only the above the fold optimization plugin enabled. So click on settings or alternatively, you can go to appearance and above the fold. Once you have entered into the above the fold optimization plugin settings, come to critical CSS, then scroll down under extract full CSS, select home page or index and then click download. This will download the full CSS of your website without any minification. Click on it to open. You can open it via a notepad. So keep it aside. Now scroll up and you can see a free version is available here. When you click on the link that is linked to this text here, it will open a critical path CSS generator. But you need to open this generator in a new incognito window. So let me copy the URL and I have opened an incognito window. You can open this by going to new incognito window or by pressing Ctrl Shift N. Let me paste the critical path CSS generator URL. Now you need to enter the home page of your website here including the HTTP or HTTPS. After entering this, you need to copy the full CSS of your website and paste it here. So let me select the entire full CSS of my website. And paste it here. Now click create critical path CSS. Copy this. And paste it in the critical path CSS box. Now click save. Now go to plugins page. Activate auto optimize, speed booster pack and W3 total catch. Now click on 
delete catch of auto optimize purge all catches of w3 total catch and then refresh your website to check whether it works correctly here you need to check mainly the styling options that is whether the css works correctly now let's check the page speed inside score and the page loading time this is our page speed score before installing this above the fold optimization plugin so let's rerun this test now we still got the eliminate render blocking of css to avoid this let's come back to auto optimize settings because this url denotes the auto optimize css settings scroll down to css options and disable aggregate inline css then click save changes and empty catch now refresh our website once let's rerun this page speed insights even after configuring our auto optimize we still get this eliminate render blocking of javascript and css but mainly an individual css file is causing this issue so let's correct this by configuring above the fold optimization plugin so let's come back to above the fold optimization come to css tab click optimize css delivery click enhanced load css and leave the position to header then click save now let's refresh our website see the score has got increased to 97 but let's check it officially with page speed insights let's analyze our website again you can see that the eliminate render blocking issue has got shifted from css to javascript so let's rectify this too by configuring the same plugin that is above the fold optimization come to proxy tab enable proxy scripts click save then come to javascript and enable optimized javascript loading also change the script loader to little loader plus html5 web worker leave the force async option to enabled also jquery stub to enabled then click save now clear auto optimize catch and wp total catch all catches let's refresh our website and it works flawlessly so let's test it with page speed insights now page speed insights gives me an error that is though our website loads from our browser a tool that is hosted on a different part of the world couldn't load our website so let's recheck or disable some options like force async and jquery stub let's click save now check our website even now we haven't got any score near this performance so we need to change the position to footer click save and recheck even this doesn't work so altogether let's change to little loader from walmart labs change it to header click save and recheck so now we have got 100 out of 100 so the main issue was this little loader plus html5 web worker when we switch to little loader from walmart labs this script loader made our website to work correctly i could have cut this part of this lecture and i could have given you directly the correct method of choosing this little loader from walmart labs but i didn't want to do that because i wanted you to know how to troubleshoot when you face issues like this so let's do the page speed analysis officially all the issues have gone 
like eliminate render blocking, leverage page caching, etc, etc, etc. Now the only issue is reduce server response time. Don't worry about the reduction in page speed score. This is because I am using a shared hosting. Since I am retesting, retesting, reloading the pages, running multiple speed tests, my website is made to load from different locations. Due to the sudden surge of traffic or sudden increase in load, the server might have throttled the speed of my website. So if I do this page speed test after some 5 to 10 minutes, then even this server response time will reduce below 200 milliseconds and my score will become 100 out of 100 because you could see the performance score as 100 out of 100 based on this Google API. If you want, let me show it here. That is, we need to go to dashboard of this W3 total catch. Scroll down and you can see the page speed report. Here, reduce server response time has got a tick mark. Let's view all the results. See, my server responded in 0.23 seconds or it's just 230 milliseconds. Once it comes down below 200, then the score will pile up to 100 out of 100. This result was shown in the first lecture of this section. So now let's do the page loading time test too. Last time we have got 688 milliseconds before installing this above the fold optimization plugin. Now let's see how much it is. See. After configuring this above the fold optimization plugin, our page loading time has got reduced from 680 something milliseconds to around 500 milliseconds. That's equal to 0.5 seconds. As said before, if I leave the website to rest for another 10 minutes, then this load time will reduce further as the response time will reduce further. Although I have continued with the web page test, and I have got the same 1.8 seconds repeat view load time which I showed to you in the first lecture of this section. In this lecture, you will learn how to do the page speed test the correct way. Normally, when you do the page speed test in just the new tab, then Google Page Speed Insights or tools.pingdom.com might load this admin bar too. So this may act as some extra CSS and JavaScript files. Not only that, we have chosen not to load the catch files for the known users in W3 total catch settings. So altogether, the page speed insights might not be loading the catched versions of your website. To avoid that, go to incognito window, open any page speed test tool or page loading time test tool and then run the test. Or if you want to just run the page speed insights tool, the two within your website, go to W3 total catch miscellaneous settings and make sure you have entered the page speed API key. Then come to W3 total catch dashboard, scroll down and you can run the page speed report here at any time you can refresh the analysis or you can view all the results here now let me do a page speed test by going to this new incognito window you could have noticed that every time i run the page speed test the tab will go dark like this or you could notice a hat and a spectacle this denotes incognito window so let me go to page speed insights and run the test see as said in the previous lecture once i left my website to rest for about seven to eight minutes the response time has got improved and the score has got to 100 out of 100 in the same way when you test with tools.pingdom.com you need to open this in a new incognito window and do the page loading time test. If you want, 
you can change the locations to any of these four locations and check the speed of your website at different locations such as USA, Australia and Sweden. Coming to web page test, after entering your URL, come to advanced settings and check first view and repeat view. After that, click on start test. Only this will give you the repeat view load time of your website. But before doing the page speed test, every time you need to clear the catch that is the auto optimize and W3 total catch. After clearing both these catches, go to your website, refresh it once. This is needed to preload the catch of your home page. Only after this, you need to open the incognito window and run the page speed insights test or the page loading time test with Pingdom tools or web page test. In the next lecture, we are going to see a minor modification to our page speed technique 1B so that we can call it as page speed technique 1C. This technique is intended for those who could not install W3 total catch plugin in their websites because some hosting providers wantedly restrict the installation of W3 total catch plugin for them this page speed technique 1C will serve as an alternative. So let's see the page speed technique 1C in this lecture we are going to see the page speed technique 1C. This technique is for those who could not install W3 total catch plugin in their website. Here we are going to install a new catch plugin instead of W3 total catch but the rest of the settings of this page speed technique 1B remains the same. That is, you need to follow the same configuration of above the fold optimization, auto optimize, speed booster pack, and other plugins too. But instead of W3 total catch, we are going to install another free catch plugin. So let me deactivate this total catch plugin. To install this new catch plugin, click on add new and let's install the next best alternative catch plugin that is WP Super Catch. You don't need to search anything. WP Super Catch appears in the featured plugins list. So install it and activate it. By default WP Super Catch will be disabled. We need to activate and configure it. For that you can either go to this plugin admin page link or scroll down, click on settings under WP Super Catch or go to settings and then select WP Super Catch. First, you need to turn on the catching, then click update status. Since I'm using HTTPS, let's uncheck it and click test catch. You should get OK for both page one and page two then it means the catch is working. Now let's enter into the advanced configuration. Simple catch delivery method works well for all the websites, but let's dig deep as we are experts in WordPress. Check don't catch pages for non-users. Don't catch pages with get parameters. Compress pages so they are served more quickly to visitors. This is equal to gzip compression by w3 total catch also catch http headers with page content enable 304 not modified browser catching check mobile device support clear all catch files when a post or page is published extra home page checks and scroll down then click update status generally this not modified browser catching will work only when mod rewrite catching is not used. But when we use export, then mod rewrite method is used. But to enable this export mode, that is mod rewrite mode, your server should support this. Now click on update mod rewrite rules. 
you should get this message that is mod rewrite rules updated and this message should appear in this green seed. Now come to contents. You can delete the expired catch files or the existing catch files by clicking any of these buttons. Coming to preload. You can opt to preload the catch files for every 600 minutes that is equivalent to 10 hours. So leave it to default or you can opt to preload the catch now. But when you click preload catch now button, your server usage will go to its peak to preload all the web pages of your website. If your website is very big, then your server may also throttle the speed of your website. So use it wisely. Coming to plugins tab, scroll down. You can see Jetpack mobile theme and WP touch support from this WP super catch plugin. When you use Jetpack mobile theme or WP touch plugins, you need to enable either of these so that this catch plugin gives support to those mobile version of your website. With this, you have completed configuring this WP super catch. Now let's visit our website. So everything is working correctly as usual. Let's rerun the page speed insights. Once you rerun the test, generally you should not find any difference between the page speed score of W3 total catch and WP super catch, but a change in score of up to five doesn't matter. Now let's run the Pingdom tools test. Of course, there will be a difference in page loading time because W3 total catch has got a lot of catching options like page catch, browser catch using disk enhanced method and lot more. But WP super catch doesn't add that much stress on your server. It also doesn't give you the best page load time, but still it's not bad. It's still great. It's under 720 milliseconds. So let's run the page speed test from the page test. Like we noticed in Pingdom tools, here also the total load time under repeat view has got increased from 1.82 seconds to 2.1 seconds compared to the W3 total catch and WP super catch versions, but still it's under the benchmark timing of three seconds. And also we have got A grade for everything. So it doesn't matter if your hosting restricts you from installing W3 total catch, then this super catch plugin is your next best option. So with this, you have fully completed the page speed technique one. In the next lecture, you will learn what to worry and what not. In this lecture, you will know what to worry and what not. As said in the beginning of this page speed technique one, you don't need to chase 100 out of 100 page speed inside score. Getting a green tick or a good score from Google's page speed insights is more than enough. What really matters is the page loading time. So try to maintain a maximum of 3.5 seconds page load time in webpagetest.org. Never go beyond that. But the benchmark timings are 1.5 to 2 seconds in Pingdom tools and 3 seconds repeat view load time in webpagetest.org. Even after following our page speed techniques, if you can't get a good score in page speed insights or if you can't get a benchmark page load time, then try the following things. Reduce external JavaScript and CSS files. Suppose if PageSpeed Insights recommends a lot of JavaScript and CSS files from external domains under minification or leverage browser caching, then avoid using such plugins or widgets if not necessary. Avoid 
pop-up widgets or plugins to display pop-ups. It not only affects your page speed, it also affects your SEO. Try to avoid using page speed unoptimized drag and drop builders. Simply try to deviate less from the ideal scenario as far as possible. The ideal scenario is using page speed optimized, minimalistic and responsive themes. Not using external assets as much as possible. Follow our page speed technique. In the next lecture, we are going to start page speed technique 2. Welcome to the new update to this page speed SEO section. In this lecture, we are going to see a new technique from the ground up. Instead of following the procedure that you have seen in the page speed technique 1 of this section, this page speed technique 2 is dedicated to the users who don't want to mess up with their website by configuring a lot of plugins. And also, you should be ready to pay a premium to get this done faster and easier. Here is my website optimized using this page speed technique 2 that we are going to discuss now. You can see that my website has got a lot of videos, some testimonials, lots of CSS effects. See, lots of images and some image animations using CSS styles and lots of JavaScript too. Now, let's see how you can optimize a website like this easily using this technique. Here is the test using Pingdom Tools Page Speed Testing Tool. I have got a performance grade of 84. But as said before, in this section, don't rely much on performance grade or other details that are given by this Pingdom Tools page speed testing tool. You just need to see the load time which is highly accurate in this tool. So I have got something incredible around 800 milliseconds. That's less than one second. Now let's move on to GT Metrics tool. Here I have got a page load time of 1.9 seconds. But you can see that my page speed score is 98% according to Google's algorithm. When we see into the history tab, you can notice that the on load time is 1.6 seconds average across multiple tests. Okay, let's move to the page speed insights tool. I got good grade or a green tick for both mobile and desktop. The scores are 85 for mobile and 92 for desktop. These scores were not possible with earlier versions of Rocket Catch plugin. So, if you are still using the older version, update to the latest one. This is a very heavy website. See, this website it has got around 1.9 MB according to Pingdom Tools and around 1.5 MB according to GT Metrics. So, this is a pretty heavy website, but still, above the fold section of this website managed to load under one second using this technique. That's something incredible. Also, I assure you that doing or implementing this technique on your website is pretty much simple and fast. The only downside is you need to pay a premium to buy this plugin. So, if you are ready, Let's see what's the technique and how you can implement. In this lecture, we are going to see the new technique to optimize your website for the best page loading time, quick and easy. So, the secret tool that we are going to use in this technique is nothing but WP Rocket Catch plugin. This is the best premium catching plugin that I have ever seen compared to the W3 Total Catch or any other premium plugins. The first and foremost feature is, it's very simple to configure and it offers the best speed possible. I'm not talking about the page speed score. I'm talking about the page loading time. Now let's compare a few features that WP Rocket Catch has compared to WP Super Catch or W3 Total Catch. The first thing is, it can be set up very quickly. It also offers catch preloading completely unlike the partial support from 
Super Catch or W3 Total Catch and also the Google Fonts optimization which is missing in W3 Total Catch. We used Speed Booster plugin or A3 Lazy Load plugin to enable lazy load but this comes by default in WP Rocket Catch plugin. The minification and concatenation of JS and CSS were taken care by the auto optimize and above the fold optimization plugins that we used in the previous technique. But in this technique, all these plugins can be replaced by a single premium plugin called WP Rocket. Also, it offers complete Cloudflare compatibility, unlike W3 Total Catch. So now, this WP Rocket and along with Cloudflare, we are going to optimize your website to load under one second. That too, very easily and quickly, that I can promise. Then, the last question would be, how much does this WP Rocket Catch plugin cost, isn't it? It costs $39. When we go to this pricing table, we can see various pricings. For one site, it costs $1.39 and it includes 30-day money-back guarantee with one year of update and support. Also, let me tell you, I am in no manner affiliated to WP Rocket Catch. If you buy this plugin or not, I won't get a penny. That's just a disclaimer. Okay, now let's see how to install this WP Rocket plugin and how to configure it. In this lecture, we are going to see how to install and configure WP Rocket Catch plugin. Once you have bought the WP Rocket Catch plugin from their website, which we have seen in the previous lecture, you will get a zip file having that plugin. Also, I will attach the URL to WP Rocket Catch plugin in this lecture as a resource. You just need to go to plugins and then add new. Then click on upload plugin button. You will get a choose file box. Click choose file and choose the zip file that you have got from WP Rocket website. Just select it and click open. Now you just need to select install now button to install WP Rocket Catch plugin. Once the installation is over, click on activate plugin. You will get WP Rocket in your admin bar. And also under the left side panel settings and then WP Rocket. Click on it to open WP Rocket configuration. You will be taken to this WP Rocket dashboard page. Now just enable the checkboxes that I enable here. Parallelly, I will explain you what each option will do on your website. Let's start with Catch tab. Coming down to Mobile Catch. Yes, we need to enable caching for mobile devices. Let's create a separate catch file for mobile devices. Leave the user catch disabled. If you enable it, then even logged in users like administrators, editors are all served the catched version of your website. Sometimes the small changes that you do to your website cannot be previewed until you clear the catch. That may create some unnecessary confusion. So leave it disabled. The default catch lifespan is set to 10 hours. If your site is less dynamic, that is, if your site's content won't change frequently, you can increase or decrease this accordingly. It's better to leave it to default value. Let's skip file optimization tab for now and move on to media tab. In our speed booster plugin configuration in page speed technique one, we have seen lazy load images feature. Since several websites use themes from theme forest or lot of plugins to display videos with several styling options, those videos and iframes will not come under lazy load feature of speed booster plugin. So they unnecessarily take a lot of time to load while carrying out page speed test and also users will experience a lot of load time. To counter that, WP Rocket offers 
lazy load for not only images but also iframes and videos. Generally, this should work with most of the websites. But after enabling lazy load for images, iframes and videos, click save changes button and review your website. Check whether these components loads correctly. Many students skip to preview their website after this step and later they won't be able to find which option is messing up their site. So after enabling lazy load for images and videos, click save changes button, then go to dashboard, click clear catch button and preview your website in an incognito window and not in a new tab as administrators will not be served the cached version of your website. Coming back to media tab, you need to disable emoji. This will reduce the number of requests and can improve load time of your site. Coming to WordPress embeds, this disables both way of embedding. Others cannot embed your website on theirs and you too cannot embed their website on yours. It removes the JavaScript request related to WordPress embed only. So other embeds like YouTube, Vimeo, etc. will work fine. That's it. We have completed configuring the basic catch settings and media settings. Let's hit save changes button and preview our websites. Whenever I say preview your website, don't skip that step. Preview in a new incognito window that's highly essential. Let's see file optimization tab in this lecture. We are going to see the file optimization in WP Rocket Catch plugin. Coming to File Optimization tab. This takes care of three plugin setups that we used in PageSpeed Technique 1. One is the minified settings under W3 Total Catch. Next is Auto Optimize plugin. And the third is Above the Fold Optimization plugin. All these three functions are dealt in these simple options. Under basic settings in this tab, we need to select all the three. That is, minify HTML, which removes white space and comments in HTML to reduce its size. Combine Google font files, which reduces the number of HTTP requests and remove query strings from static resources, which can improve your page speed score in certain tools. Under CSS files, first we need to enable minify CSS files, which does the same thing like minify HTML. It just reduces the CSS file size. You will get a warning. Don't worry, we can uncheck this feature if it breaks your site. So go ahead and click activate minify CSS. This second option that is to combine CSS files. Don't enable it if you are using HTTPS protocol as well as Cloudflare. Combining CSS files may reduce HTTP requests, but it restricts parallel downloading of multiple CSS files at once. If your website has more than four CSS or JS files or Google fonts, this option will give you a considerable page speed boost. Generally, Theme Forest themes and plugins use lot of CSS and JS files. For them, this option is very useful. But you don't need to use this feature if you have HTTPS on your website. If any CSS file of a plugin or your theme is causing issues when minified or concatenated, find that particular CSS file alone and add it to excluded CSS files. Generally, you won't need this option with WP Rocket Catch plugin. But if your theme or plugin is highly unoptimized for page speed, then you might need this. If you're wondering how to find the particular CSS file that is causing issues, don't worry. I shall add the documentation guides link as an external resource to this lecture. Let's leave optimize CSS delivery for now and move on to JavaScript files. But before that, click save changes button, clear WP Rocket Catch, open a new incognito window 
preview your website and check whether menus, widgets and other design elements are displayed correctly after enabling these CSS options. After checking your website, come to JavaScript files section. Here you need to enable minify JavaScript files to reduce JS file size. Like we got in CSS settings, here too you will get a warning. Ignore it and activate JS minification. Leave combine JavaScript files option disabled if you have HTTPS installed on your site. Else activate it. If any JavaScript file of a plugin or your theme is causing issues when minified or concatenated, find that particular JS file alone and add it to excluded JavaScript files. To find that problematic JavaScript file alone, you can use the same guide that I have linked to as an external resource to this lecture. Leave load JavaScript default option unchecked and click save changes button. Clear WP Rocket Catch and preview your website in an incognito window. If everything works correctly, then no problem. You may continue to the next lecture. If images, videos are not loading or some sliders are not working or if you are not seeing some elements, you need to disable minify JavaScript files option. Click save changes and check your website again. If elements are distorted or CSS animations are not loading or there's no formatting styles loaded, then disable minify CSS files option Click save changes button and check your website again. The issue is either with your theme which is not coded perfectly or with your hosting which doesn't support some essential features for minification and concatenation of CSS and JS files. If you still can't resolve the issue, take a screenshot of your website before and after configuring this file optimization tab and post in our question answer section. Thereby, I can provide you the correct solution. We shall see the eliminate render blocking of CSS and JavaScript. In this lecture, we are going to see how to eliminate render blocking of CSS and JS with WP Rocket Catch plugin. Once you have paused configuring the options that we have demonstrated till now, it means you have configured almost 90% of this WP Rocket Catch plugin. So you should have already got the maximum optimization that you can touch within your website. This advanced options are for those who wants to optimize that each and every option that they wish to play around with catch plugins. First of all, let's come to this page speed insights analysis of my website inspireround.com. Here, you can see some files are causing eliminate render blocking issue. A few of them are JavaScript, a few of them are CSS and one is Google font. To resolve this issue, the CSS and JS files should be made to load asynchronously. Come to CSS file section and enable optimize CSS delivery option. But this may break your site's design elements if your theme is not coded properly. Whereas, if you are using a page speed optimized theme, this option will give you a significant boost in page speed score and page loading time. Now click save changes button, clear WP Rocket Catch and check your site in an incognito window. After checking, come to JavaScript files section, check load JavaScript default and save mode for jQuery options. This will take care of render blocking JS files. Again, click save changes button, clear WP Rocket Catch and check your site in an incognito window. Sometimes if your critical path CSS is not generated, which is a very rare scenario, then you might need to wait a few hours after activating this optimize CSS delivery option. Even after that, if you get prioritize visible content issues in PageSpeed Insights tools, then it means you need to add a fallback critical CSS. 
to counter prioritize visible content issue, we can either add critical CSS or leave optimize CSS option disabled. If you choose to leave this entire option disabled, then under CSS file section, choose combine CSS files. Though this won't completely remove the render blocking issue of CSS, it can reduce the number of blocking CSS files to one, which in turn can improve your page speed inside score than before. Whereas if you want to create a fallback critical CSS, use the guide that I link to as an external resource to this lecture. In case you want better page loading time or page speed score than what you have attained now, that too, after loading both CSS and JS asynchronously, then you should only move to a better page speed optimized theme or a powerful server or a premium CDN service like Mac CDN. In the next lecture, let's see the other options that are available in this WP Rocket Catch plugin. In this lecture, we are going to integrate Cloudflare into our WP Rocket Catch plugin. First of all, log in into your Cloudflare account and then go to this top right corner and select My Profile. You will be taken to your profile page where scroll down and you can view your global API key for Cloudflare. Now click on this view API key button, then you will be shown your Cloudflare global API. Just select it, copy it, and then come to Cloudflare tab on our WP Rocket Catch plugin. If you don't see Cloudflare tab, then go to add ons tab first, enable Cloudflare. Now the Cloudflare tab would be visible. Open the tab, paste your Cloudflare global API key, enter your Cloudflare email in this box and enter your domain here. Choose off for development mode and choose on for optimal Cloudflare settings. If this is the only domain that you have added to Cloudflare. If you have added multiple websites, then choose off for optimal settings too. But if you have installed WP Rocket Catch in all the other domains that you have added to Cloudflare, then also you can choose on under this optimal settings option. If you are using HTTPS everywhere, that is, if you have installed SSL certificate on your domain and chosen flexible SSL on Cloudflare, then choose on here. Else, if you are using HTTP protocol, then choose off. Though I use HTTPS everywhere, I chose to use off for this option since I am using full option under Cloudflare SSL instead of flexible. You may do that too. This is a widely compatible and safer option. Click save changes button and then click clear all Cloudflare catch files. As of now, you have completed configuring WP Rocket Catch plugin to the 100%. Beyond this, there are a few settings which doesn't affect your page loading time or page speed grade at any cost. They are just a few tools and options. In this lecture, we are going to see the remaining options and tools that are available in WP Rocket Catch plugin. Coming to the database tab, here we can see post cleanup, commons cleanup, transients cleanup, database cleanup, and some other tool. What this essentially does is almost same as WP Database or WP Optimizer plugin in our previous page speed optimization technique. This tab just replaces those entire plugins. Now let's see what you can do with this tab. Just select revisions, auto drafts, trashed posts, spam comments, trashed comments, and then click optimize button. When you click on this button, all the checkboxes that you have checked will be deleted from your database. That is, your database will be cleaned. What is the post revisions? Whenever you publish a post, the first revision is created. And whenever you make a change, for each change you make and for the each time you click on the update button, a revision is created. 
So normally you don't require the previous revisions of changes that you have made. So when you check on this checkbox and click optimize, those revisions will get deleted. Similarly, you can delete all the auto drafts, trust post, spam, trust comments and unused tables in your database. You can even schedule automatic cleanup too. You may consider weekly or monthly automatic cleanup options. But coming to transients, I don't recommend to clear expired or all transients. Sometimes this may mess up with your database. So don't do this. That is, don't check these two checkboxes. Remaining checkboxes doesn't matter. If you still want to clean them, go clean it. Else just uncheck them and check the ones that you want and then click optimize. If you're so lazy to clean your website periodically, you can choose automatic cleanup. But I recommend you to manually run it whenever you are free or whenever you have got lots of revisions or drafts or trashed posts. Let's move to WP Rocket dashboard tab. Whenever you click clear catch, you can do a preload catch and when you click on this preload catch, all the catch files that are cleared will get preloaded automatically. Coming to preload tab, when you choose automatic, then WP Rocket catch automatically preloads your contents and creates the catched files automatically whenever you clear catch. But this may add some unnoticed overload on your server. So choose manual and select save changes. If you're using a sitemap already, then enter the URL of that sitemap here and activate the automatic sitemap preloading. If you have installed Yoast SEO plugin, then WP Rocket Catch should automatically deduct it. If you don't have Yoast SEO XML sitemap installed yet, then you can manually enter your sitemap URL here. The sitemap creation process is explained in the next section. But just be aware, if you choose to preload your catch, whenever you clear the catch, your server will get a lot of stress. To load all your pages and catch them. So it's upon you to decide whether to activate this automatic preloading or not. Coming to CDN. If you have bought any CDN from Amazon or Mac CDN or any other CDN network, then you can enable CDN and configure it under this tab. But at this point of time, instead of going to CDN, I advise you to go to Cloud Hosting plus Cloudflare. That will give you the best possible speed for your website. Keep CDN as the last option. Let's go to Add-ons tab again. This is the last option that we are going to see in this lecture. If you enable Warness, the Warness catch will be purged or cleaned every time whenever you clear WP Rocket catch. You should activate this option only when your server is using Warness. If you don't know or if you are not sure whether your server is using Warness, then just uncheck this option. But how can you know whether your server is using Warness or not? Simple. Just ask your hosting provider. Just write a ticket or do live chat with them and check it. Now come to dashboard. Here comes the tools such as clear catch, preload catch, Per job catch that is similar to Warnish Clear Catch and Regenerate Critical CSS. These are available under WP Rocket Admin Bar also. Come to Tools tab now. You can backup your WP Rocket Catch plugins configuration and later you can choose that backup to restore those configuration. With this, you have successfully configured all of this WP Rocket Catch plugins options. Regarding this WP Rocket Catch plugin alone, apart from my help, you also get the support from this plugin's author since you have paid a premium to buy this plugin. Enter a summary of what's going wrong or what trouble you are facing in one sentence here. Under description box, explain your issue and click send your ticket button. That's it. 
you will get response from the WP Rocket Catch author himself.